injuring low back injuries is how um, important um, the pelvic floor and the abdominal muscles. I mean, we all know this, right? You know, you, you hear like, you, if you want a strong back, you need to have a strong core. If you hurt your back, you need to strengthen your core, all these things. And I think the pelvic floor is a piece of this that gets missed often when we talk about strengthening our bodies to um, support our spine. And the, the thing that's important to remember about all your muscles, not just the muscles we're gonna focus on today, but any type of strength that you build is not sustainable if you are always strengthening. So years ago when I did a yoga teacher training, um, one of the lead teachers was like honing in on us that Mula Bandha, and if you're not sure what Mula Bandha is, it's, um, it's the pelvic floor lift that's in yoga. There's three main locks of the bodies, which I'm going to talk about the diaphragms of the body. And Mula is root, means root, and Mula Bandha is the root um, lock of the root chakra. And it's basically just pel um, lifting the pelvic floor muscles. And this teacher said, you know, lift 24 seven, don't ever let it go. <clears throat> and I think that is one of the most poor bit of advice that someone could give you. Um, if you engage, if you engage your bicep all day long and never let it go, your bicep will eventually get so weak that it will be, it will cease to be effective in being able to flex. So if we tense any muscle group in our body and never let it go, all we do is create weakness. Um, and with the pelvic floor, a lot of this is very subtle. Obviously, the pelvic floor muscles are completely subtle. But oftentimes, especially with women, <clears throat> um, there's a lot of emphasis on strengthening the pelvic floor for preventing urinary incontinence as you age. And um, the idea that you should be always lifting your pelvic floor muscles is erroneous. So please don't take that away from what I'm going to teach you at all any muscle group, but especially subtle muscle groups, build strength by um, a, a, a combination of relaxation and contraction. And this is what um, keeps us fluid and subtle and supple in our movement patterns, um, but especially something as subtle as the pelvic floor muscles. So these muscle groups are not strong in the sense of like your glutes are strong. They're, they're much more, uh, they're smaller muscles. They're much more fine tuned. And we can hold a lot of tension in our pelvic floor from stress men and women. This isn't just a woman thing. Um, we can hold a lot of unconscious tension in our pelvic floor for all sorts of reasons. Just regular stress of the day. But of course, if you've had any trauma in your life, any pelvic trauma in your life, there's a lot of subtleties that can happen with holding tension. Um, and so learning how to engage muscles and release muscles is equally important. And when it comes to supporting the low back, if you think about the cylinder of the, the abdomen, um, the top is your diaphragm, the bottom is your pelvic floor, and wrapped around the sides of your cylinder is your transverse abdominus muscle. And your TA, or your transverse abdominus, wraps around from the back all the way to the front. It's a corset that holds your abdominal contents, your organs, in. And the um, synchronicity or harmony of the way you move the pelvic floor, the transverse abdominus in your diaphragm is really important for your breath patterns to be very functional as well as supporting the spine, the lumbar spine. So the, th the three diaphragms of the body or in yoga, they're, the terms are the bandhas or the, the locks. And I don't like that word because it makes you think that you gotta hold it tight and never let it go. Um, but uh, I think of a bandha as an opening and a closing, kind of like a, a curtain in an open window with wind blowing through it. The wind blows the curtain one direction and then it can billow the other direction. And the bandhas of our body are like that. They are significant for the way we breathe and the way we support our spine. So the three bandhas are the vocal cords, um, <clears throat> which I'm sure you have felt tense when you are stressed or emotional. You can get tension in your vocal cords, um, but really they should open when we breathe in and cl come closer together when we breathe out so that they can vibrate and make sound on our out breath. And then um sounds like a lock in water yeah exactly alana it sounds like a lock that you can open and close in a in water um the second is the bond the the actual diaphragm and this is you know the epicenter of our breath obviously this is the main 
muscle that we use to breathe, but it drops down and wide, opens on our inhale, and then comes back in and up on our exhale. And our pelvic floor, which is the third of the bandhas, or th the third of the diaphragms, like I like to call them, is doing the same action. The pelvic floor drops down and wide on the inhale and draws in and up on the exhale. So we're gonna work with these three bandhas of the body, these three diaphragms of the body today, in the way that they increase our capacity for tidal volume of oxygen, but also in their capacity to support our spine. So um, things will be subtle. A lot of our class today will be subtle in the realms of the pelvic, pelvic floor. Um, but I want you to really think about, so a couple more things before we get going. I'm sorry I'm talking a lot, but it's important. Um, think of the pelvic floor muscles instead of like a grip and a, you know, a real strong fist grip strength. Think of engaging the pelvic floor muscles like drawing a tissue out of a tissue box where there's a gathering in and up, but it's so light, it's featherweight, you know, where you don't have to have, I don't want you to imagine that you're lifting weights with your pelvic floor. I want you to imagine that you're lifting a tissue out of a tissue box with your pelvic floor. So that everything's super subtle and, and not so um, intense because this is not the, the action of our pelvis. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and sit up straight and tall and take a moment, get comfortable, close your eyes and feel that sense of coming into yourself. Interoception is really important when we're working with the subtleties of the diaphragms of our body. So go inward and feel what you're feeling. <clears throat> Can you feel the weight of your sit bones on whatever you're sitting on and let the legs feel heavy? Is there a sense of being able to be self-supporting where your spine, you're not slumped, uh, you're also not ramrodding upward, but rather just having a subtlety of self-support for your spine? Is your head over your pelvis or leaning forward? Do you feel like your shoulder blades are part of your support system? Can you open across the collarbones? And once you feel a sense of ease through your face, your skin, and a sense of support through your spine and your torso, come into observing your breath. Maybe let's start with the vocal cords. See if you can get the sense that they're, they expand away from each other as you inhale. And as you exhale, that subtle vibration of them moving toward each other, it's not a lock. It's not a lock. It's just a gentle moving toward each other. And um, make some sound on your exhale. So either hum or something that's any sound you want really you can you can do anything you want um, but something that makes your vocal cords vibrate so you can sense their movements toward each other it's them vibrating right against each other that makes our sound so that's them getting closer and as we inhale we open them up and you can't talk on your inhale nearly as well as you can talk on your exhale and this is because the diaphragm is closing on the exhale, opening on the inhale. You need the vocal cords to be next to each other to make sound. Travel into your lungs. Let the breath go deep. Start to notice, even if you can't feel the diaphragm itself, feel the flaring of the bottom ribs, the movement of your belly. Sense the three-dimensionality of your diaphragm where you can feel the dome drop down, displacing your organs. Your squishy organs are easily movable. Feel the back, so the three-dimensionality. Feel the back expand, the sides, the front. Feel that container of your torso that the diaphragm is the top of. Can you feel the sides of the container move outward as your diaphragm moves down. 
Can you feel the sides of the container move inward as your diaphragm moves back up on your exhale? And this is the subtlety of your transverse abdominis, that corset muscle, allowing some space as you inhale, relaxing, subtly contracting on your exhale to draw your organs back in, allowing your diaphragm to move up. Add the pelvic floor, now the bottom of your container. Can you feel both the actual diaphragm and the pelvic diaphragm drop down and wide on the inhale? And on the exhale, the subtlety of picking up a tissue out of a tissue box, and not the first tissue, you know how the first tissue is harder to pull out, like middle of the box tissue, drawing the tissue up through your pelvic floor. And notice already if your breath got weird, because sometimes if we are a reverse breather, we tend to inhale when we try to lift up our pelvic floor instead of exhale. And if this happens to you, this is a, you're going to have to tease this out. This is, this is a pattern that's ingrained and needs to be altered. So, you know, teasing out where you breathe in and where you breathe out in relation to the pelvic floor is important. So your inhale should drop the pelvic floor and the diaphragm down and wide, and your exhale should lift the pelvic floor and the diaphragm in and up. All right, now play with all three diaphragms at one time. Feel that sense of space. There's a reason for this. We're trying to make the body less pressure so the air wants to come in. And then as we exhale, we're trying to make more pressure so the air wants to leave us. So the diaphragm's broad and open on the inhale, sealing up, snugging up on the exhales. And you can notice how the sealing up of the diaphragms, notice we're gonna do this on our back in, in a moment, but notice the spine now. Notice the subtlety of when you draw your transverse abdominis in and lift the pelvic floor, is there a little more pressure against your vertebrae? Do you feel that this can be like an airbag effect, like holding a pillow against your spine to support? And if this is getting complicated for you, do not stress. The last thing you need is stress. Okay, so if your breathing patterns get all wonky and reversed, that's okay. You just work with what you got. And one of the most important things you can do in our practice today is observe the body. Observe how your spine feels, your breath feels, your pelvic floor feels, your belly. Let's go ahead and place the palms together at the heart and bow in. All of this is for the essence of deep, good, healthy breathing, oxygen, fluidity, both finding the contraction and the expansion and moving between the two. Support for our spine. What can all of these things, good breath, good support, good fluidity, adaptability, what is the energy of these that we're gonna to cultivate today? What do you need them for in your life today besides just the physical body? So send intention for how the breath can support you, how fluidity and adaptability and support can support you. All right, let's release the hands and come down onto our back. So find your way. All right, so lie down. We're gonna be here for a little bit. So just know the practice, the beginning of our practice is gonna be pretty subtle. So first, let's just enjoy being on our back. Feel how everything rearranges itself. Your organs rearrange itself. Your spine rearranges itself. Notice the change. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. All right, and then let's start to move. We'll find our diaphragms in a moment, but let's just get in the body, get in the muscles and the bones. Stretch your arms overhead if it feels nice to do so, and then lengthen the right side. Lengthen the left side, just kind of swiveling back and forth between the two sides of your body. 
opening things up. Notice you're in a little bit of a back bend when your arms are over your head. Notice what that's doing to your nervous system. And then bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a hug. And rocking. Enjoy the subtleties. Uh, one of the things I noticed hurting my back, I couldn't even do this on Sunday or Monday. And what a pleasure to be able to simply move your body. So um, let's not take for granted the ways, even though we have pains and aches and problems, um, let's notice the ways that we move with ease and have gratitude. Okay, let's circle the knees one direction. And then notice what's that doing to the back side of your pelvis, your sacrum. Let's go the other direction. All right, and then let's take the knees apart from each other and back in. And just notice, you know, the range of motion in your hip joints. Notice if your pelvis is starting to move. All right, and then let's bring our right knee into our chest, stretch our left leg long on the floor, find a good squeeze in your hip joint and find some openness in your feet. Wiggle out your toes and roll through your ankles. Feel the length of your spine. Start to pay attention to how you are breathing. Okay, and then let's change sides. Left knee into the chest, right leg long on the floor. And feel free to wiggle out your toes and roll your ankles here. Finding the breath. All right, and then bring both knees back in. Rock a little bit and let's find our starfishes. Inhale, open things up, spreading out your limbs. Exhale, close things up. Tuck your chin to your chest. Find that expansiveness as you open. Feel the fluidity of moving from one direction into another direction. Sometimes we like to hold our postures. Sometimes we like to move our postures. But this sense of fluidity is really important that we don't just lock in with something all the time and put your feet down onto the ground. And um, we're gonna do this with our feet on the floor. You can do this with your legs on the floor, but let's just start with our feet down onto the ground. Bring your arms into a comfortable place out to your sides. Take a moment to just breathe. Can you feel the three diaphragms of your body, your vocal cords, your diaphragm, and your pelvic floor? Can you feel things opening on your inhales? and sealing back up or closing. It's, it's not a seal, it's just a drawing in on your exhales. So in yoga, the terms are Jalandhara Bandha is the throat diaphragm. Uddiyana Bandha is the actual diaphragm diaphragm and Mula Bandha is the pelvic floor. So there won't be a test or anything, but just in case you ever hear those terms, that's what they are referring to. All right, now we're going to work with just a little bit of the subtlety of our pelvis. So when you anterior tilt the pelvis, so everybody take your tailbone and drop it down toward the floor and feel the top of your sacrum lift up off the floor. And you'll feel your whole pelvis move into an anterior tilt. This is also called nutation of the sacrum. So the movement of the sacrum is nutation. The movement of the pelvis is anterior an anterior tilt. And then let's move into counter nutation where the top of the sacrum moves into the floor and the tailbone lifts off the floor and our pelvis moves into a posterior tilt. And nutation, counter nutation, anterior, posterior tilting, often find each other, they, they sync up, but they don't have to sync up. The mutation and counter mutation is the movement of the sacrum and the anterior and posterior tilt is the movement of the pelvis. So they are different bones, but they often work together. And we're gonna work them together today, okay? So let's just start with some very subtle anterior and posterior tilting of the pelvis, okay? 
And notice without me directing you to which muscles you should be using to do this, what are you feeling? Um, are you feeling your glutes being in charge of the posterior tilt? Are you feeling your low back at all being in charge of the anterior tilt? Just notice um, what muscle groups you like to kick in. And is the pelvic floor part of that? I'm gonna direct you to the pelvic floor in a moment, but oftentimes our awareness is so not present in our pelvic floor, um, you know, just going about our business through the day. We don't pay attention so much to the pelvic floor and it would behoove us to have a little bit more awareness of that part of our body. So now come to relax and we're going to, um, there's, there's a bunch of different groups of muscles in your pelvic floor. You have one that's like a fan, like a hand fan that you, you know, feather out um, and then draw back in. So like fanning out and fanning in. So this group of muscles is very important for the diaphragm of our breath. There's another group of muscles that's like a sling. Think of like a baby's diaper, you know, that goes from our pubic bone to our tailbone. Um, so it's just a sling across the whole bottom side of our pelvic floor. And then you have another group of muscles that's more shaped like a triangle from your pubic bone to your sit bones. So we're gonna work a little bit with the fanning muscles today. Okay, so you don't have to worry, there's, there's no test. You don't need to know the names of the muscles. Those are, you can, I can, I can show anybody the anatomy of, up on my anatomy and app, app if anybody's interested. But for now, we're just gonna work with the fanning muscles, which is the diaphragm of our breath. So as you anterior tilt the pelvis and nutate the sacrum, we're gonna widen our sit bones apart from each other and feel the pelvic floor fan out. And then as we move the pelvis into a posterior tilt, close your fan. The sit bones are gonna to move toward each other and the pelvic floor muscles are gonna draw in and up. So this is subtle, remember your tissue box. Because a lot of times if we go aggressive, we can use our glutes, which are much stronger so notice if you're trying with your glutes to um, do this action, see if you can let the glutes be in the back seat and the pelvic floor muscles be in the front seat. Okay. So the fanning of the pelvic floor muscles. So the sit bones widen on the anterior tilt mutation, the sit bones close, fan goes in on the posterior tilt counter mutation. So first we're just gonna feel this from our sit bones, the widening of the sit bones, and the drawing back toward each other of the sit bones. Once again, keep the glutes from being bullies in the posture. Start to add your breath to this. Exhale as you bring your sit bones toward each other. Inhale as you bring your sit bones wide to each other or wide away from each other. We're gonna add this into the transverse abdominis in a few minutes. Um, you know, the, there's a reason for this, for supporting your spine. This is a very important aspect of supporting the lumbar spine. So we're just breaking it down into its parts first. Okay, now I want you to imagine that you're doing this action from different parts of the body. So we're gonna move this from the tailbone. So focus on the very tip of your tailbone instead of your sit bones. And we're gonna drop the tip of our tailbone into the floor. And then we're gonna lift the tip of the tailbone up away from the floor. And just notice if when you put your awareness as your anterior foot, you know, you're still, we're still rocking the pelvis. Um, as you put your awareness to the tip of your tailbone instead of your sit bones, where have you suddenly gained access and awareness of muscularly in your pelvic floor? So whatever we draw attention to, grows in um, nervous system control and strength. And whatever we ignore, you know, the nervous system doesn't have as much conscious control over. So let's just find the tailbone in the mutation and counter mutation for a moment. And then uh, after a moment of that, sorry, I'm just turning the ringer off on my phone. Sorry about that. Um, now we're going to change our focus into the sacrum. Okay, so feel the top of your sacrum. I think everybody knows where your sacrum is. It's the top, uh, it's the broad flat bone at the bottom of your spine. Your tailbone is the bottom edge of your sacrum. So now go to the top edge of your sacrum where your low back and your sacrum meet. And we're gonna move 
from there into this nutation and counter nutation, anterior and posterior tilting of the pelvis. So what has changed when you're originating movement from the top of the sacrum versus the tailbone versus the sit bones? So this is all a concert of lots of different muscles. So notice when you put your attention in different places, what changes, what suddenly comes online, what goes offline in your awareness and your control. Remember, we're inhaling as we lift the top of the sacrum and drop the tailbone and widen the sit bones. And we're exhaling as we drop the top of the sacrum, lift the tailbone and draw the sit bones toward each other. So now let's come into concert with all three of our bones. There's, you can do this subtleties working from the sphincters, like your anal sphincter or your um, urinary sphincter, but today we're just working from the bones, okay? So let's try to concert all three of those bones together now. Top of the sacrum up, tailbone down, sit bones wide, breathe in, fan the pelvis broadly, Exhale, top of the sacrum down, tailbone up, sit bones toward each other. Start to feel your abdominal muscles too as you exhale. Okay, so just go back and forth. Broad open on the inhale, fanning out. Exhale, sacrum down, tailbone up, sit bones toward each other as you exhale. Okay, so this is the subtlety of how to move the pelvis. We're, we're focusing on this now and actually moving the pelvis a fair amount but this can be found subtly in our breath all the time. Remember, we're lifting a tissue, okay? So feel the center of the pelvic floor as you you know, find the exhale. Try to draw all those bones into unison to lift the center of the pelvic floor tissue up. So let's start to add the transverse abdominis, our corset muscle, into this action. So remember, this is the corset that wraps around our back to our front. It attaches onto our pelvis. So as we inhale, relax the TA. As we exhale, we're still moving the pelvis. We're going to start to zip up from pubic bone to belly button while we lift our tissue in our pelvic floor, activating the TA. Inhale, let it go. Everything's soft. Anterior tilt the pelvis. Exhale, zip up pubic bone to belly button, like zipping up a zipper on a tight pair of jeans, lifting your tissue at the same time. Try not to let the glutes be in the front seat. Keep breathing. I know there's a lot to focus on. Keep breathing. The diaphragm's open on the inhale, close on the exhale. Notice if you have weird breathing patterns that are messing you up a little bit here, and if so, return to just simply trying to open and close the diaphragms on the pro appropriate part of the breath. Add one more piece to this. As we lift our tissue, tailbone, sacrum down, sit bones toward each other, now we're gonna draw the hip bones toward each other, toward our zipper. So just see what you're finding. How can you access the low portions of the transverse abdominis in relation to the pelvic floor? And notice if you're getting all gripped up. So if so, you know, shake things out, loosen things up, let go, and try again. So these are all very subtle things. These are not, you can't grunt and grip your way through this. This is not the type of exercise that you muscle bound your way through. We're really trying to intercept and sense the subtlety of um, our body. All right, so one last time to review. When we anterior tilt the pelvis and nutate, that means lift the top of the sacrum, we are widening our sit bones and breathing in and fanning our pelvis floor, pelvic floor and opening our belly. And as we exhale, sit bones move toward each other, tailbone lifts, top of sacrum moves down, lift your tissue, zip up your zipper. And that's a lot going on. So try not to let your breath get all bound up. It's, uh, if you're an overachiever, this can get really intense really quick, so try to be subtle. Okay, let's let go of that for a moment. Bring your knees into your chest and rock around a little bit, Just swaying from side to side, releasing any tension in your back. Okay, and now grab a block. Well, I promise we are going to get off the floor. So, but that, I just want you to add the adductors, one more layer to add to this. You can either put a block this width or this width in between your legs. And you can have it 
high between your thighs or closer toward your knees. So just go where it's comfortable for you. And we're gonna start moving so much that we're gonna go into a bridge pose with this po the tilting of our pelvis, okay? So we're adding the adductors. Once again, glutes are still on. They are gonna engage when we lift up, but you wanna have them be the back seat drivers instead of the front seat drivers. Take a deep breath in, fan out your pelvic floor, anterior tilted pelvis. As you exhale, gently hug the block, sit bones toward each other, lift the pelvis up. Okay, and then lower the pelvis down. Ever so slight tilt of the pelvis. <clears throat> now we don't have to tilt so much. Think less about a big roll in the pelvis and more about the functional strength of the pelvic floor along with the adductors and along with the TA. So don't worry so much about tilting the pelvis. Think about the engagement of TA, tissue box muscles, and your inner thighs helping you stabilize on the way up. Are you breathing? Are you breathing? What would it feel like to inhale on the way down and exhale on the way up? Feel all that muscular support on your exhales. Are your glutes taking over? So one of my daughters is a dancer and her dance teacher told me that it was common when she was growing up, she's in her 50s, <clears throat> when she was growing up, keep moving while I explain this, one of the ways that ballet dancers were taught to stabilize their pelvis and their back for all the things they were doing was to imagine squeezing a dime between their butt cheeks. And so they got super strong in their glutes, but at a disadvantage of the subtlety of the rest of their body. <clears throat> and obviously that's not how it's taught any longer. Okay, relax, let's go ahead and come down. Go ahead and roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and knees. So this is very different than just tucking the tailbone. So for a moment, let's all tuck the tailbone. Forget about all the subtleties you just learned and just tuck the tailbone. And notice the pressure as you kind of push the low back out. So this is a way we often think to protect our back, but it's actually counterproductive. So let go of that and let's start to find the cat cow. See what it feels like to feel the anterior and posterior tilt of the pelvis now, coming from the subtleties and the muscles you just worked with, instead of just squeezing the glutes and tucking the tail tight. See what it feels like to include the whole spine, breathing in as you arch your back, widen your sit bones, fan your sit bones wide, and as you exhale, sit bones move toward each other, pubic bone lifts. So let the action of the pelvis be from the transverse abdominis and the tissue box muscles instead of just squeezing your glutes and tucking your tail. Keep moving into the subtlety of the spine. So let the whole spine breathe. Open things up on your inhale. Feel the roundedness of your thoracic spine on your exhale. Tuck your chin. Feel how the vocal cords and the pelvic floor meet. Can you connect both the top and the bottom of your spine? Okay. And then forget all that for a moment. Just swirl around. Just move your spine however you want to move your spine. You can sway from side to side or do some circles. Anything that is loosening and freeing for any part of your spine that needs it. Make sure you're still breathing. All right, find your breath. We're gonna add one more layer of muscles onto our, our, our support beams that we have going on. Bird dog, so stretch your right leg straight back behind you. And we're gonna take our left arm out in front of us. And now see what you can do. No longer are we anterior and posterior tilting the spine, but we're still breathing. Can you feel now the recruit of bigger muscles? Your glutes on one side, your multifidus, the muscles along your spine, even your shoulder blade on the oppositional side. Can you feel those bigger muscles in the back starting to, it's like a concert. It's like multiple instruments harmonizing together to support the spine. Can you still find your transverse abdominis? Zip up pubic bone to belly button on your exhales. See what kind of global support you have with your tissues lifting, your zippers zipping, your spine being supported in the back. 
and then relax and let that go. And let's come to the other side, left leg, right arm, find your breath. So we're not, you know, anterior and posterior to carry, tilting the pelvis, but can you feel the subtlety of the inhale widening the sit bones and the exhale recommitting to that pelvic floor lift, the transverse abdominus support, the bigger muscles along your back and your glutes helping. The breath can give you that fluidity that the anterior and posterior tilting were doing for you. The breath can do that. So feel the inhale, let things go. Feel the exhale, re-engage. This subtlety and fluidity is going to give you more strength for the spine than if you just grip and lock down. Go ahead and release that and come up to dog pose when you're ready. Find your spine. Stretch out through your hands and your feet. Feel free to play. Dance around a little bit. Do you want to move your feet? Do you want to bounce? Do you want to bend? Do you want to sway? Find the full big picture. So we focus so much on the little teeny places in your body. Bring yourself global now. Feel your full self yield into the floor. Find your breath coming and going. Find it full body coming and going instead of just the subtlety of our diaphragms. Big global breaths. What does the pelvic floor feel like now? It's different when we're inverted a little bit. Everything shifts around a little bit. So notice on your exhales, is there a natural drawing in of the diaphragms? Can you feel that billowing out on your inhales? And then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Fold a little bit. Feel free to wag or shake or bounce, hop, anything that's, you know, moving that feels good. Halfway lift, the spine grows. Stretch out your hamstrings. Exhale and melt back down. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, widen the sit bones. Inner thighs rolling back. Exhale, bend your knees and round in a little bit. Push off your feet, rise up, find your breath, open up through your spine, cactus, open your arms, open the chest, and then exhale and round the spine in. Inhale, reaching up, exhale and floating back down. Inhale for a halfway lift, exhale and melt. Step your left foot back, right foot is forward, come into a lunge on this side, extending the spine. Let's start to move. Square hips, duck, tuck the chin toward the chest. Inhale, coming back. Maybe you don't want to inhale, maybe you'd rather exhale. So just find what you're finding, what's natural to you. Let the breath, diaphragms of the breath open on your inhales. No, it doesn't matter what position we're doing, we want to have space for our breath. Come into a lunge, find your breath, inhale, rise up into crescent lunge. Reach the arms, your back knee can be on the floor or bent a little bit or straight. Put your arms anywhere that feels comfortable. Have your feet in a place that's good for balance. Your knees are nice and protected. Find the place for you. And then feel the subtleties here. Can you feel the transverse abdominus on your exhales engaging? Can you zip up the zipper from your pubic bone to your belly button? Are you able to feel the pelvic diaphragm relax on your inhale and lift the tissue on your exhale? How does pelvic floor support impact your spine right now? Do you notice anything different when you, so everybody let go of everything we just worked on. Let your belly relax, let your pelvic floor relax. Notice your spine and then re-engage with the pelvic floor and the transverse abdominus and notice your spine. Can you feel that you're supported? And then release the hands. Come back with your back foot forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and melt back down. Step back, your left foot is forward now, your right foot is back, coming into a lunge. Let's start moving through your legs, squaring the hips, tuck your chin. Coming forward, breathing as you go. Enjoy, enjoy, just what are you enjoying? 
There's no destinations, just being in the body, being in the breath. All right, let's find our way into crescent lunge again. Come on up, put your arms anywhere that is supportive, put your legs anywhere that is supportive. So maybe your lunge is very light because your knee needs a little bit extra support. Maybe your back knee is on the floor. Maybe your arms are down or out. So do the pose that's right for you. And then notice, how are the diaphragms of the body? Can you feel yourself expand? Can you feel the support of your spine as you contract? Even your inner thighs hugging to the midline. Remember the lifts with your block between your thighs. Even recruiting the inner thighs can be supportive for the lumbar spine. So feel your tissue lifting, feel your zipper zipping, feel your corset wrapping, feel your inner thighs hugging, feel your body breathing. All right, let's relax your back foot down, bring it forward. Inhale for a halfway lift, exhale and stick a block between your thighs. So coming into a chair pose. So remember, you know, when I did this on Monday, I had my, my body against furniture because my back needed more support. So you can always do that. The block can give you a lot of support here for chair pose. Your arms do not need to be up. They can be down at your heart or down at your sides or back, however you want them to be. Imagine the inner thighs rolling back, the sit bones widening. So there's a nice neutral curve in your lumbar spine. Can you maintain the neutral curve instead of tucking? So look at me for just a minute. Instead of tucking the tail like this, can you feel the neutral spine stay and still engage the pelvic floor? So try to isolate the difference between lifting a tissue and lifting the transverse abdominis, pubic bone toward the navel, without feeling like you need to use your glutes and tuck your tail to do that action. So find the support of the spine from a subtler place. Gentle hugging of the block. Diaphragms are breathing. Remember to let things go and reconnect. Let things go and reconnect. Fluidity. All right, stand up straight and tall. Open up, maybe a little bit of a back bend, maybe not. Keep the block, fold in half. Bend your knees. Inhale for a halfway lift, exhale and fold. Step back to a plank. Keep the block between your thighs. So walk your feet back and hang out here. All right, so now we have strong muscles like our inner thighs and our glutes that may wanna take over. See if you can keep them engaged but not the primary drivers. See what it feels like to use the block as it, let the abductors, the inner thigh muscles support the transverse abdominis, your deep abdominal muscle. Feel that corset on your exhales. Let it go a little bit on your inhales. Feel the fluidity of a little give and take. The diaphragms open on your inhales, the diaphragms close on your exhales. TA is working hard. Pubic bone to navel, zip up your zipper, corset your torso, lift your tissue. Subtleties, breath. and then we're gonna come down, take the block out of there, and come to lie down on your belly. We've done this lots, but I'll, let's repeat it again. Put your hands underneath your forehead. Forget everything you just learned, okay? Relax your belly, relax your pelvic floor, no support there, okay? And lift your leg up and notice what happens to your back, okay? And then release your leg down, whatever leg it is, now, pubic bone toward the belly button. Zip up a zipper. Try to do this from the front of your pelvis instead of feel the difference. Everybody squeeze a dime between your butt cheeks and tuck your tail under. And you may feel like, oh yeah, this will support my spine. And it will in the sense that it will lock you down and not, be able, not allow you to arch your back. But that's not the subtlety that we're looking for or the fluidity of movement that we're looking for. That's a lock, okay? So undo your dime butt cheek thing, and instead find the subtleties. Engage your pelvic floor, so the sit bones are gonna move gently toward each other, the tissues are lifting, 
the zipper is zipping. Now notice you can do all this without your glutes having to be super strong. Now engage your glute to lift your leg up. And notice when you're breathing, if there's a little bit more subtlety for your spine to accommodate the breath, for your body to be both supported and fluid simultaneously, relax that leg down. Let's go ahead and find this for cobra pose. Bring your hands, your fingers are in line with your chest. Roll your shoulders a couple times. Just get things moving in the upper body. Feel the engagement through the pelvic floor. Inhale and rise up. Find your breath. So the glutes work, but they don't crunch on the sacrum. All right, and then relax and lower yourself down. Let's try that one more time. Inhale or exhale, where do you want to be? And relax. Come up onto all fours. Have a moment to swivel around your spine. Move in any way you want to move. And then find your way back to child's pose. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. Lift up to dog pose when you are ready. Finding the breath. Let's lift the right leg up in the air. Take a deep breath in, exhale and bring your foot forward. Plant your back heel down. Find your way up into Virabhadrasana 1. Lengthen yourself up so the back heel stays rooted. And then we're going to turn and open up into Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. So find your way into a wide open stance. Now our pelvis is broad, right? We're feeling a lot more spacious than when our legs are close together. So what can you find to feel the subtlety of support for your core? Can your inhale let your pelvic floor drop just a bit? Can your exhale lift the tissues? Okay. Do you have that sense that the three diaphragms of your body are working in concert with each other? Are you working too hard? Okay. Are you focusing too much? Do you need to have a global view? Can you feel the zipper, pubic bone to navel at the same time as the pelvic floor? How does this feel supportive of your spine? Do you feel like your spine can come off your pelvis a little bit when you have that support? All right, let's go ahead and come on up and turn your feet straight. Okay. Heel toe your feet in. I promise we'll do those two poses on the other side. Just come into Sadasana for a moment and find your breath. Okay. So for a moment, a lot of times, if you can see me on the screen, a lot of times when we tuck our tailbone to try to protect our back, we end up pushing our, our thigh bones forward. I don't know if you can see that. And this actually, it, it, this does not help our back very much. It may feel like it's an intuitive thing to try, but it really is very locking for our back. So instead of tucking and pushing our pelvis forward, let's try to take our thigh bones back and align our shoulders over our thigh bones instead of pushing them forward, okay? So lose the tail tuck, let the tail be very neutral. So think about that mutation and counter mutation. We're gonna just be in a neutral suspension. Feel your breath and feel the roots of your feet. The fourth diaphragm is the bottom of your feet. So let the yielding of your inhales the diaphragm is releasing down and wide. Go all the way to the bottom of your feet. Soft knees. If your knees are locked, you can't feel it. And then as you draw the diaphragms in and up, the tissue, the diaphragm, the vocal cords, see what it feels like to drink up through the bottom of your feet, to drink from the earth. Notice your breath. Are you needing to tweeze out the breath? Exhale as you lift the pelvic floor. Inhale as you release your feet into the floor, release the pelvic floor, release the diaphragm, release the vocal cords. Find the dance of all four of these diaphragms now. Everything opening on your inhale, soft knees, everything hugging in on the exhale. See if you can feel the support for your lumbar spine from a 
deeper place instead of tucking the tail and pushing the thigh bones forward. Subtleties, pelvic floor and transverse abdominis are hugging onto the spine in a very different way than pushing the low back out, the thighs forward and the tailbone tucking. Feel the yielding, soften your knees. Let the low back feel the release instead of just the grip. All right, now when you're ready, lift the arms back up. Okay, I think you're turning, I don't know where you're turning, so come back to dog pose, spread your hands down onto the floor and find dog pose. Inner spiral, sit bones wide. Let's lift the left leg up in the air, square hips. Exhale and bring that foot through to a lunge. Plant your back heel down, come up into Virabhadrasana 1. Feel the support of your core. It doesn't matter how high your torso goes. Feel the pubic bone lift towards the zip up. Feel the TA engage. Feel the tissues of your pelvic floor be lifted. And then we're gonna turn and open up to the side for Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2. Really, the subtleties of the movements of your diaphragms can be found in every pose. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We can access this everywhere. You can do this while you're washing dishes or cooking, chopping up carrots. Okay, it doesn't matter, standing in line at the food store. Drop the shoulders down, feel the support, feel the width, your body's so broad here. Yield your feet. Can you let your feet be that fourth diaphragm so that you connect your breath to the earth? Is there support on your exhales? Is the subtlety of your pelvic floor available to you? Is the transverse abdominus supporting the spine to help you feel like you can lift off the pelvis instead of crunch down upon it? Go ahead and come out of that pose. Last dog pose, come back to the long edge of your mat. Find your breath. And then we're gonna come forward. Put your knees onto the ground. You have a choice, either a forearm plank or a regular plank. You can stick a block between your thighs like we had before or not. So take a variation that feels good to you. This is a wonderful pose to help you feel that corset <clears throat> support of the transverse abdominis. There's so many way, ways to come out the, come at the transverse abdominis. This is a very global pose, either plank or a forearm plank, whatever you're doing, see if you can feel the exhales hug you into the midline, the inner thighs, the sense of the transverse abdominis, the pelvic floor, everything's drawing in and up on the exhales. Feel yourself grow in length on the, on the um, inhales. Feel yourself grow in length. Crown and tail, the rib cage widens. On the exhale, everything condenses to the midline. Feel the fluidity, the breath moving through you, the diaphragms. Okay, lower yourself down to the floor. Take any back bend of your choice. So you can do Superman pose or another Cobra pose or up dog or locust or anything that you want. See if you can feel that the front, the pelvic floor and the front body, the transverse abdominis is doing the work instead of just your glutes. Your glutes are active. For sure they're a part of this. So are the muscles along your spine. Remember you're a concert. You're multiple instruments playing together. Breathe. Your breath is the conductor. Breathe. <clears throat> All right, and then come down and rest on your belly. Pick up your feet and windshield wiper your knees left and right. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and come onto our back. <clears throat> All right, so come to lie down. Bring the knees into the chest. Rock around a little bit. So let's come into reverse pigeon pose. Put your left foot on the ground, the right foot is on top of the left knee, and reach back to the back of your left thigh or the front of your left shin. 
Try not to let your neck get all ripped up. If you need a pillow under your head, take a blanket. Feel free to move around here a little bit. So I know last week I talked about um, teaching a class about the piriformis and how that impacts the SI joint and um, the sciatic nerve and all that. And I, I'm planning on doing that on Friday. Um, but the, you know, one thing I just want to slip in here when we're talking about the pelvic floor, the back side of the pelvic floor, the muscles on the, the very back side of the pelvic floor include the piriformis and the obturator, which are, you know, more, they're what you're feeling right now, stretching. So we're going to work a little bit more. We're going to expand on what we did today into Friday's class. Let's go ahead and put your left foot on your right knee. Go ahead and reach and grab on this side. Feel free to rock a little bit, left and right. Feel free to be still. Make sure your neck is gentle and easy. Finding the breath. Are the diaphragms now. And then relax and grab on to your feet. Okay, happy baby pose. Just rock around a little bit with the back, relax and stretch. And now if you have a blanket or two, we're just going to spend a moment or two in Supta Baddha Konasana. So flat on your back, Support underneath your outer legs, butterfly your feet, to, so your feet are together, your knees are splayed out, and you have support of blocks or blankets underneath your knees or outer hips. Okay, so just stick the support in there and take a breath. Sometimes, let me just explain a couple other variations. If your back's bothering you, you can, you can stack up two blankets long fold like this, and put your feet on them and the, you're on the back on your back with your feet up on the blankets sometimes that can be a little more soothing there's so many ways to do suttabhadra konasana the traditional way with the bolster underneath your back if you happen to have that so however you want to get in there i'm just choosing the path of least uh, propage because i don't know what kind of props people have once you're there see make sure you feel supported and let's just take a moment to open our diaphragms up, get comfortable, and let yourself be breathed. So what does it feel like to trust enough to let your knees drop, to let your pelvic floor be open, your pelvis, your whole pelvic girdle be open, your belly, your throat, your chest, everything is vulnerable and open. This is a pose of deep trust. So if you struggle with a lot of unconscious tension patterns in the pelvis or belly or diaphragm, you grip your diaphragm, you grip your throat, all these subtle places where we tend to deny the ease of breath for lots of reasons, it's good to practice. Do I feel open? Are the layers of the onion peeling away? Am I able to breathe freely? Are there subtleties of stress patterns or histories in my body that prevent me from being free? So feel what you can feel to open yourself up into that kind of freedom. The diaphragms are loose and open, easy. The belly is relaxed. Big Buddha belly breaths all the way to the pelvic floor. Let yourself breathe.
what you put your attention toward in your body grows in perception. And what grows in perception grows in um, not control, but a sense of being able to utilize your body most effectively and efficiently. So look for the nooks and crannies inside and see what subtleties you find. to find your way into Shavasana. So if you're really happy, you can stay. If you want to just straighten your legs, put a support underneath your knees or not, you can do that. And if you need something more like knees to chest or rocking or twist, then take that as well. So you do you to get to a place where you can rest in Shavasana comfortably. And as you transition, if you are moving, maybe you're not moving, but if you are, once again, find a comfortable place where your body can breathe, where you can feel the yielding of your whole body into the earth, where the breath and yielding become one, where the body's diaphragms of breath are open and free, fluid and mobile. Let's begin to deepen our breathing again. Find the fluidity of your diaphragms. If you really learn the art of fluid diaphragms, yielding, which we practice all the time, and the fluid diaphragms are two peas in the pot. So even before you move, see if you can feel how the fluidity of opening yourself up for breath is a similar quality to opening yourself up to surrender into the earth. 
can you allow both the energy you're receiving from prana in the air be equal to the energy you're receiving from below you from the earth connect into the subtleties of this energy exchange that you are connected and supported Let's gather ourselves and find our way onto our side. Take your time. And as you find yourself curled up into a little ball, Use your arms, try to lift yourself up with as least amount of effort as possible. And as you come to your seats, either with your arms down or your palms together, feel the subtlety of the breath again. Open yourself up to the flow, the connection. And just as you receive prana and energy through your breath, offer it outward on your out breath and dedicate your practice to another. Share your energy, this fluidity and support with someone in your life who needs it. Namaste. Thank you everyone.